This is working. All right, I think we're getting set up, but I'm going to double, triple check. May also do that. It does look like we are live on YouTube. And let me double check. Oh, we're on, we're everywhere. I think now let me just mute all my sound. I've got 6,000 things open. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit of an echo, but I wonder if that's from me. Let me do this. I can put headphones in if that's better. I think it's fine. I actually now, I'm not hearing it at all. So as long as we're okay. good. All right. Um, we are live. Hello, everybody. Hello, Estelle Voice International um, followers across our Facebook and YouTube platforms. Um, we are super excited uh, for our second actual event of World Voice Week that we are hosting this week. Uh, it is a figures for beginners um live class and if you're not familiar with our product um the estel adventure figures for beginners it is a curriculum uh a, a book a powerpoint and some lesson plans uh specifically geared towards young learners um we all know that estel is an incredibly um I don't know how to say rich model with so much to learn. And sometimes you need a different approach at the material. And that's what Estelle Figures for Beginners does. So you don't have to be a kid to use it. But today we do have someone who works specifically with kids. It is the next day in Australia right now. We have Trish Delaney Brown from Australia. Say hello, Trish. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Trish it's is a Estelle master trainer, singer, songwriter, teacher. What else am I? Mom. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, who specifically uses Estelle figures for beginners um, in her own classroom. And she's going to take us through a little bit of uh, what a lesson would look like. Now, you, uh, Facebook audience, YouTube audience, I guess even Twitter audience, are our participants. So please feel free to respond in the chat uh, and respond yourselves at home. I'll be doing, again, triple duty here. I'm going to be a kid. I'm going to be your commenter. I'm going to be everything all at once. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to Trish. Take it away. You want to share screen potentially. And I'm going to be on the chat. I will do that. There it is. And get rid of that. Woohoo! Okay, well, wonderful. Thank you for having me. Um, I love this work obviously um and interestingly kids have not been my uh go-to so most of my career i've been teaching adults um or young adults and so it's been a real journey to work with younger kids and it's actually been incredibly inspiring um, to find this model and how it works with kids and i think one of the things that inspires me is that we're encouraging our young learners to be in their bodies and to not just listen to a sound and be defined by a sound but to explore that kinesthetic perception of what does it feel like and to be taken on that journey of knowing that they have options so the thing that really inspired me to kind of take this wonderful book and run with it um, is the experience that many uh, adults have in Australia and I'm, I think it's a pretty universal thing of carrying the trauma of having been in a school production or a school choir and being told by a, um, a choir conductor you can't sing or that sounds terrible or and feeling like they can't sing and holding that for all of their life. 
So to know that they are not their sound, that their sound is beautiful, that any sound is beautiful, but that they have options is, is really powerful. And particularly if we can get them before they start to become overly self-conscious, I think it's a really, it's an amazing, amazing tool. So what would a lesson look like? We're going to start from the beginning. It's a very good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's, here we are in our classroom and we're about to go on our still adventure with our figures for beginners. Woo-woo! Yay! I'm being a kid. I'm being a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so after. isn't it amazing that although all of our voices are unique, they're built exactly the same way. So we can all speak and sing just like we can all smile, laugh and cry. And although we have our favourite individual sounds, we are unlimited with the sounds that we can use once we have discovered the 13 structures that make up our voice. So we are going to learn to control each of these voice parts that we meet with exercises called figures. So these are our training exercises. They're like the equipment at the gym. You might go to the gym or your parents might go to the gym and they concentrate on their lats by doing their lat pull down or their biceps by doing their bicep curls. This is what we are doing with our figures. There are training exercises for that particular structure in the voice. Each structure has a name. It's named for a part of our body that moves to create the sound and when it moves, it has its own special voice quality with its own personality and character, its own feeling and its own sound. And we are going to become very good friends with our 13 structures. Hmm. To become friendly with them though, we're going to have to concentrate on a few aspects. So. We know that when we're building a house, sometimes the most important bit is the bit that's not actually seen. It's the foundation, and that is like our craft. So craft is all about building our skills. It's going to make us aware of our voices and how we can move its parts. It's like the training drills that you might do with a ball sport that give you control of the ball so that then you can move it around the field in soccer, or but if you're a dancer, it might be like the training exercises, the positions that a dancer does at the bar, giving them control over certain muscles so that then they know how to put those muscles and positions into choreography to perform. So that's what we are doing. We're allowing ourselves to learn our craft so that then we can apply it to our artistry. So artistry is how we apply our craft to speaking and singing, and just like every sport has different rules, we're going to have to use our craft skills for different kinds of artistry. A pop song has really different rules to how you use your voice compared to a classical song, or even compared to music theatre. We know this because we can hear that the sounds are quite different and the way that the songs are presented are quite different. So when our craft or our foundation is strong, we can build any kind of house on it. You become the architect, the designer. You can build whatever you want. So when we put our craft and our artistry together confidently, that's when we get our performance magic, when we get into the zone, when everything that we want to express and everything that we have practiced comes out just the way we feel it. You might have had that experience either performing or listening to a performance where you might get goosebumps and you can feel it, the magic of performance when everything works well. We want to experience that magic and we experience it more often when we've got our strong foundation of mm -hmm. solid craft. How do we make sound? Might be good to know. I sang for 20 years, I was a professional singer without actually knowing how I made sound. So you can do it, but it's really helpful to know how your instrument works. So we have a combination of power, source and filter. Our power is the breath 
from the lungs that moves the air to the sound source. You might think of this like the gas or the petrol that runs the car engine. Our source is the true vocal folds. We can see them in here, the red lines there. They vibrate, they open and close and create a sound wave. So that's kind of like the motor that vibrates the car. And then we have our filter, which are all the structures above the vocal tract here. And it shapes the sound wave into qualities, tones and words. So you might think of that like the body of the car. If we open the hood, the motor sound gets loud. If we close it, the hood dampens the motor sound. An example with an instrument might be a piano. If you think about the big body of a piano, that is the component that filters the sound that comes from the strings. So the strings are the source. They're the part that vibrates. And the power that gets the string to vibrate is our hand on the key or the hammer that hits the string. If you're a drummer, your hands or your feet, depending on what drum you're hitting, they're the power. They power the drumstick that hits the skin of the drum. The skin is the source that vibrates. And then the body of the drum filters that sound. So if you've created a sound wave on your bass drum, that big bass drum is going to filter the sound into lower, richer sounds. If you've hit the snare, you're going to get a thinner, smaller sound from that smaller filter. Our voice is amazing because we can change the shape of the filter and give ourselves all kinds of different sounds. This is a little activity that you might like to do in your own time where you choose which component each um, instrument or part of the instrument is from. Is it power? Is it source? Or is it filter? Are they powering the start of the sound? Are they creating the vibration or the tone? Or are they a body that filters that sound? You can have fun with that on your own. So you might feel this, but it actually takes effort or energy to speak and to sing. And it can be helpful to know how much energy or effort we are using. So we are always going to pay attention to our effort dial. We're going to ask ourselves two questions whenever we're performing an exercise. One is, where do I feel the effort or the energy? And number two, what is the effort number? How much effort or energy am I expending? One is not a lot, 10 is a lot. So one might be here, 10 might be here. How much sound do you want? How much energy do you need to put in? File that away. You're going to use that every time we perform a figure. Something else we need to be mindful of. We want to be careful. We've got our lovely buzzy bee that comes through in our books and on our um, PowerPoint to remind us of very important things. First of all, our most comfortable vocal effort. We want to start with our smaller numbers. Don't go too hard. If you feel a scratch, a tickle or a cough, time to stop, take a break, breathe and relax your vocal folds. And you'll get lots of other healthy tips from our lovely friendly bee throughout the book. But we're going to meet our first friend, our first structure. And this is Oggy Onset. Offset. Now, you might have heard those terms before, but if they're new to you, what do you think they might refer to? An onset and an offset. What's your um, guess is in the chat? We have definitely a chat going on Facebook, YouTube. What? Say that again, Trish. So what do you think an onset might refer to and an offset? If we're turning something on in the voice, what are we generally turning on? If it's off. I'm gonna let people reply. Give me a second. 
People are being bashful. Okay, we're not replying. Say, okay, if, if we're turning something on, I have a feeling that it is the start of your vocal folds closing. Oh, gold me. star. Gold star, Shaluk. <laughs> we have the beginning of the sound, phonation. People are now finally responding. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so how do we start the sound? That's our onset. So our offset is how do we finish the sound? Mm. And we know, those of us who have, have used the a still model, we know that it's super helpful to start with some primary colours. We all know this from our painting, don't we? We don't go straight to a whole rainbow. We start with our primary colours, one, two, three, red, yellow and blue. And once we get familiar with those, then we can start to mix them. So we are going to start with our primary colours here. And let's find them together. So I want you to imagine yourself in this scenario. Isn't it fun that we get to be actors as well? We're storytellers as singers. And we need to be able to find ourselves in different situations and let our voice communicate what it is that we're feeling or seeing in our minds. So here we are. It's early morning. Soccer always happens early morning, doesn't it? <laughs> and we're at the game and our friend Olivia obviously hasn't quite woken up yet because she almost falls over. And we hold our breath and exclaim with a glottal pop, Hey, Olivia! Hey, Olivia! <laughs> My goodness! Oh, we run over to her. We're out of breath. So we whisper with an aspirate exhale, Hey! Olivia! Everyone try that. Olivia! Beautiful. Then she stands up and she kicks the winning goal. So we smile <clears throat> and with a smooth reply we say, Yay! Olivia! Yay! Olivia! <laughs> Beautiful. Let's do those again. Our glottal pop. A! Olivia! A! Olivia! Our aspirate. Hey, Olivia. Hey, Olivia. Our smooth. Yay, Olivia. Yay, Olivia. Beautiful. So, what are we feeling? What are we hearing? <clears throat> and do we see anything? So if we're using voice print, we might see something. If we're using parts of our instrument that are external, we might see something like how our lips move or how our body anchors. With this part of our instrument, with Oggy, it's right inside. So we can't necessarily see it unless we're using our voice print program, but we can absolutely feel it and we can hear it as well. So what did you feel? I felt, uh, I felt a pop. I, or it's like something stopped when I said A, Olivia. And when I said, hey, Olivia, I felt almost like air started to, to come in first. And then in yay, Olivia, in that last one, it felt like actually a lot of work in my, uh, it, at my source, at, at my tr true vocal folds. I'm, yeah. I'm to my level. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I felt that too. And I think the thing that I felt stop, well, let's try this. Let's go to say A, but don't say it. And what happens? What happened to your breath? It, it completely stopped. Is it still moving? It stopped. What stopped it, I wonder? Hmm. I think it's called your true vocal folds, so, right? Absolutely, your true vocal folds. It's the first point within our instrument that can stop the air. Fabulous. And then when we made our sound, A, we got that little pop at the beginning. What would happen if we, if we stopped our air at the end of the tone? So this might be easier to do on a sustained pitch. Let's try this. A. A. And we stop the air at the end. So we get a glottal offset. Fantastic. Was that voice loud or soft? It was louder, I would say. 
comparatively. Yeah, I would say that too. Certainly compared to our, <clears throat> our smooth onset. I'll just do a little uh, in brackets here for people. I'm recovering from COVID. So I'm sorry for any little <clears throat> throat clears or still sinus action, okay? Out of bubble, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's try our aspirate. Hey. 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 And same thing. What if we release our air because we can feel the air is rushing through and then we get tone. And what if we release to the breath as well? Because remember, we're very breathless talking to Olivia. Hey. Yeah. Olivia. Olivia. Beautiful. So is that sound loud or soft? Is it clear? Is it breathy? I think it sounds a little bit softer and a little bit more breathy. Yeah. And depending how quickly we get to our sound, we can have an abrupt or a quick aspirate onset. Hey! And you might find that you end up with a little bit more tone in that one. Whereas if you do it gradually, hey you might end up with still some breath coming through that tone. Interesting. So Oggy is already giving us some amazing sounds that we might be able to use and recognize. What happens with our smooth? Yeah. Go to make the smooth, but don't make the sound. Oh, that's interesting. What do you feel happening with the breath there? kind of sneaks in, kind of sips in. I feel like it's it's waiting. Oh, it's waiting, yeah. That's it's point. waiting. Yay, waiting to start the sound. Mm -hmm. So our breath and our tone is starting together. And it's, that waiting takes a little bit of energy, I feel. So in my body, I feel like my effort dial is a little bit higher with my smooth onset. This may not be the case for you, depending on how you use your voice. But that's what I feel. The breath is waiting for me to start the tone so they can start together and a little bit more energy is required. Now is that sound loud, soft, clear or breathy? What was it for you? I think it got soft and not, not as breathy. Yeah. That was the same for me. I wonder about the people at home. What are they feeling oh, yeah. and hearing? What are you feeling and hearing? Put it in when you do your smooth onset in the chat. And we'll let them which know. Which onset? Which onset takes more effort or energy for you? So here's our wonderful friend Oggy onset offset. He starts and stops the sound at our true vocal faults. Look, isn't he kind? He's even pointing to where he lives. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. So when he holds his breath for the glottal, the vocal folds close and the sound pops out or stops quickly, depending if it's an onset or an offset. For aspirate, he lets his breath go into a sigh at the beginning and the end of his words. For a smooth, the end air and the sound start or stop together. We've felt all of that, aren't we clever? This is another wonderful tool. We've got all of our options, all of our primary colors here for us. And we've also got these wonderful pictures at the side. You might've seen us conducting ourselves on our hands. Do you know what? Our brain loves to have hand actions. It helps our brain learn super quick and we love to be efficient with our voice training. We don't want to spend more time at the gym, in the voice gym than we need to, so we're going to use all the tools that we have and our hand signals are super helpful with this. So in this figure of Oggy Onset Offset, our fingers are pretending to be our vocal folds. So with our glottal, they are closed because we're holding our breath before or after the sound. And we hear a pop or a stop. Remember that? Let's try that again, but this time on a vowel. Let's do E, A, U. E, A, 
Ooh. Great. And let's try a little bit longer on the tone so we get an offset as well. E. Ah. Uh, ooh. Fabulous. Now, what are we seeing here? Our trivocal folds are apart before the sound starts. He. Ha. Who. Again. He. Ha. Who. And we're getting breath before and after the sound. That was kind of abrupt. What if we do it like a sigh, a little bit more slowly? He. Ha. Who. So that's a little more gradual. Fabulous. That's our aspirate onset or offset. And now our smooth. And we're going to use our finger and our thumb to show this. They're coming together, the breath and the tone. And you might feel the effort in your neck. You might feel it in the roof of your mouth or your torso as you're holding the air back, waiting to start the tone. We can use a Y if we want. Or you can get rid of it and just use that smooth onset. Fabulous. And what did you hear there? Did your voice want to go a little bit higher on that one like mine did? It doesn't have to, but mine wanted to. And you might find out why in another lesson. Another part of our instrument to explore. I love meeting our friends, our 13 structures. What do we need to be careful of? We don't want to use more breaths than we need. Mm. We never want to work harder than we have to. And we certainly want to be aware of constriction or strain. So if we <coughs> push a bit too much air through, you might get a little bit of a scratch like I did there. Or if E. Ah, if I'm working at an eight or a nine on that glottal, I might get a little bit of strain coming in. We don't need to work that hard. What's the number that you need to work at to get the result with most comfortable vocal effort? Go back to your dial and have a little look. Always pay attention to how it feels. So Augie's been super helpful for us. But what's next? We have, if you've got your wonderful, a still book, Adventures for Beginners, on page seven, we've got some other exercises that we might be able to do. And most of these are on speaking. But a lot of us want to learn how to use our voice so that we can sing. So why don't we move to a song and we'll come back to our cards. We're going to do some training in songs. So this little ditty is using Oggy onset offset. And of course, everything's closed because I've left it too long. Mm. So here, here are the lyrics and you might be able to see from the um, consonant that we have here which onset we're using. So A, 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 yay, 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 hey, 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 is what we will be doing. Join in when you can and look up or down for the volume. Can you feel it when you start the sound? A, A, A. Can you feel it when you start the sound? Yay. Yay, yay. Can you feel it when you start the sound? Hey, hey, hey. Can you feel it when you start the sound? Hey. What do we call it when we start the sound? Hey, hey, hey. What do we call it when we start the sound? Yay. What do we call it when we start the sound? Hey, hey, hey. What do we call it when we start the sound? Hey. 
It's a glottal when we stop the sound. A, A, A. It's smooth when we stop the sound. Yay, yay, yay. Ask for more abrupt when we stop the sound. Hey, hey, hey. Ask for more gradual when we stop the sound. Hey. Wow. How did you go? I got it. I picked it up. I picked up the melody. <laughs> Fabulous. So all of these, um, the songs that I've written or the wonderful poems of Esther and Kimberly that I've set to music, they've been written with a few things in mind. So the first is that generally it's going to be kids who are using the exercises and the, um, and the songs. So they're very simple melodies. They're in child-friendly keys, and the melodies have been written with the aim of putting the voice into a favourable position to demonstrate the structure that we're focusing on. So some of them might seem for adults might be uh, maybe a little bit twee, but what I'm experiencing is that I'm actually getting quite a few adults who, who say to me, they, I don't want the sciencey thing. They just still want to explore how it feels, how it sounds. What do they feel? What do they hear? What do they see? Um, so watch this space because I'm, I'm, we can absolutely use these as adults, but we'll also, I'll also be composing some ones that, that maybe have just, you know, a, on an effort dial, a two or a three of hip, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> I, so I... Go, Luke. Yeah, we're, very, we're quite close to the end, but I want to um, be sure to just, yeah, talk a little bit about what Trish did. So she took the, and first of all, was that not a great lesson? And again, those who are, are watching are, are having a great time. Trish can't see, you'll see after the fact. <laughs> um, however, um, these exercises are all in the book number one so number one all of this information is in the book so you can get the book on estelvoice.com and um and you can also get it for your class right it's a great wonderful tool for your class and i think trish keeps highlighting on this and myself as also an educator too um starting young learners uh with the correct information will save so much trouble, right? Trish said it so early on that um, she, you know, didn't even know how her voice worked. Um, for how long, Trish? How long was that? Oh no. And I think I lost Trish. Trish! Let me try this. Oh, there you are. Trish? 20. Oh, oh, there you Yay. are. Hello. I can hear you at least. I'm here. Oh, my geez. Okay. We're losing Trish. That's okay. Oh, no. There we go. It's, it's in and out. There we go. There we go. In and out. Oh, now oh. she's back. She's completely back. <laughs> 20 years, right? 20 Yay. years. 20 years. I didn't know what it was. And again, if we can start young learners with the correct information, again, Estelle voice training, I keep saying this over and over in my own practice. It is not a, a method. It is a model for understanding the voice. We're not, uh, your true vocal folds are words that are, you know, that's used in anatomy and physiology. And uh, they're the correct way instead of vocal cords even, right? We know that things are more complex than that. And, um, giving empowering students learners of all ages with that information they can't not use it right they 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 realize that oh yes this is the most um thorough way to describe my vocal process right and if we can start them younger um how much easier it will be for them as a learner as a singer as a voice user but also as those who are imparting information to others as teachers it makes it infinitely easier if i've had someone who's at estel from day one um, so again, 
the the information is all here and it's in its package for young learners but again it can be for anybody of all ages um trish uh how have your kids responded how how how, how in your classes have they um responded to this type of work like ducks to water they absolutely love it because it's giving names to things that they already feel right. but perhaps that they haven't paid attention to um, and this is what I love about the way that the, um, the colors, the mm -hmm. figures, um, and what I've tried to bring to the games and the songs as well, this joy of exploration, because it's an, it is an adventure to be able to give a name to something. Um, so one of the things that I've done is designed kind of playing cards that have the figure on the front uh, and the conditions on the back. And one of the games that you can play is as you meet each figure, you add those cards to the pack and you shuffle them up and you put them on the floor and the kids turn them over and they have to demonstrate that particular figure. Um, and I love watching them, particularly once you've got a few and they're putting them together. So they're showing me a glottal onset with mid false vocal folds and thick true vocal fold body cover. They've got the three cards turned over randomly and they're able to demonstrate that and they can do it on spoken voice and then they might put it on a tone. But what is super exciting for me is when they come back to the next lesson and they've been listening to music and they play me an example of a song now, she's using a glottal onset or oh, I'm hearing lots of Thelma thyroid in this one and this becomes a shorthand, as Luke's saying, with your individual students. I've got uh, actually some young adults as well. I'm like, what does it need? And they'll be like, needs a little bit more Thelma. Where's Frankie? Where's Frankie at? Oh, he was, yeah, he was, he was working too hard. Let's retract Frankie. So it's this wonderful shorthand. And another thing that I love, it depersonalizes it. So we are so quick to judge ourselves because of this internal instrument that is an expression of ourselves. It's so easy to think that if we are not getting the result we want, we are wrong. Not that we're using our instrument incorrectly, which is what a guitarist would think or a piano player would think, but somehow we are wrong. And so being able to name these structures they're the ones, they're the ones that are getting us the result that we want. What's the result that I want? I need to engage Oggy or Frankie or not. Um, and it's not about me being a good person or a bad person or getting it right or wrong. It's just making choices using these wonderful structures that become our friends with these names. So it's, it's wonderful work and it really does go beyond uh, kids <laughs> um, but I think that inherent joy of exploration that young learners have oh my goodness well with them and I think we're, she, we're going through good and bad service, but we got it. Oh my God, that was such a great way to end. It's about voicing, not singing. It's not about speaking. It is just, again, finding uh, your parts that we all have, right? Every single person has it. And gaining control of them. How amazing that we can empower um, everyone. <laughs> Doesn't matter how old, how young with this information that they can choose how they want to use it. And I think that's, again, the goal of Estel Voice Training, vocal empowerment for all, right? It's everybody's game here. So um, it was, it's so nice to have the information and the way that the Estel Voice model lays it out is um, exceptional. And again, I want to say thank you to Trish um, for doing this wonderful live class for us. Um, again, she'll see all the comments and everything. Um, I want to encourage you to get the Estel Adventure uh, Figures for Beginners, It's I posted the link in the chat. Um, and again, you can get the book, the PowerPoints, the lesson plans, all for a really uh, great price right now. 
Um, and I will encourage you to come to another one of our World Voice Day events happening this week. But you can see all of that online. And we will see you for our next event. Thank you, Trish. Thanks, everybody.